I'm Dr. Alice Chang, endocrinologist from the University of Toronto. And the question that we're going to address now is when do cardiologists need to worry about diabetic ketoacidosis when using SGLT2 inhibitors? So I think the first thing I want to mention is that if you're using an SGLT2 inhibitor as a cardiac medication in someone who does not have diabetes, you do not have to worry about DKA. In someone who does have diabetes, the vast majority of the time, you also do not have to worry. So let's take a step back. And first of all, let's establish the fact that SGLT2 inhibitors do not cause DKA. The only thing that causes DKA is missing insulin and excess glucagon. So you have to have a scenario where that exists, which is usually a person who is no longer making insulin, like in type 1 diabetes or in more advanced type 2 diabetes, and they have some sort of acute illness raising their glucagon level. What the SGLT2 inhibitor does though, is it may mask the DKA. So the usual sign to someone that they're going into DKA is that they don't feel well, but their blood sugars also start to rise because of missing insulin, excess glucagon. However, if they happen to have an SGLT2 inhibitor on board, they have another outlet of the sugar. So then instead of having very high blood sugars at presentation, they may have a blood sugar that's in the normal range or only slightly elevated. So then the person is feeling unwell, is definitely making ketones, but they check their blood sugar and it's not that high, so then they may not know to seek help. So therefore, what do we do about this from a clinical perspective? I think first of all, we need to be aware of who is at risk for DKA and avoid usage of SGLT2 inhibitors in those individuals. So the highest risk group by far are those living with type 1 diabetes. So at this stage of the game, we generally do not use SGLT2 inhibitors in type 1 diabetes. The other scenario would be that person living with type 2 diabetes who should be on insulin, has marked hyperglycemia, perhaps has been losing weight unintentionally, and instead of giving them an SGLT2 inhibitor, they should be placed on insulin. And if someone living with type 2 diabetes is on insulin, then they need to stay on their insulin. So even when they're acutely ill, they still need to take at least their basal insulin so that there's insulin in their bodies to avoid the development of ketoacidosis. And then finally, to avoid the masking effect, when someone does develop an acute illness, at least for now, the recommendation is to temporarily stop the SGLT2 inhibitor so that should the patient go into DKA for other reasons, the SGLT2 inhibitor is not present to mask the DKA. So just to recap that, avoid in type 1 diabetes, if someone needs insulin with type 2 diabetes, give them insulin. People should stay on their insulin even when they're sick. And then in acute illness, the SGLT2 inhibitor can be temporarily held to avoid the masking effect. So overall, this is still a uncommon situation and a very predictable and avoidable situation. And therefore, it just requires a little bit of thinking and a little bit of knowledge in order to help our patients. Please subscribe to our channel to see more videos on heart failure and visit our website at exchangecme.com for additional resources.